The daily experience of people in a city is more influenced by small sensations than the big urban planning decisions. By designing a tiny house, a bus stop, or even urban furniture, you make a difference to the total feeling of the city. You can choose to look at a city like a huge canvas, with buildings being like a brushstroke. One small change may seem unimportant, but zooming out, it makes up a piece of art. All the analytical process, all the planning, ends up in something that will eventually be built out of an actual material. If you're talking about like a small furniture piece, you will make that. And if you're building a whole block or a neighborhood or a district in a town, that will also be made out of some kind of material. So of course, we can't do anything without materials. In the creative process, I would say that you start thinking about materials from the very beginning, because you want to place your project in a setting. So say that we are making a residential building. It will be in a context. What are the surrounding buildings made out of? Do we want to contrast to that environment or do we want it to harmonize? What do we want to add with the project that we're making and the materials that we choose? How will we make up the structure of the building and what is it made of? And then you can put different claddings or like the makeup of the materials on the outside of the building that could be different. For example, you can do a concrete building and then put a wooden facade. And the building would in the end communicate to be a wooden building, but the inside is made of something else. Then there's the sustainability aspect of it. Do we want to use a material for some reason throughout the project? From the construction part to the aesthetics, to communicate something about the sustainability and the vision of the project. The visual and the aesthetics and the experience part of what you make is also a big part of the goal and the vision of your project. And the materials will help to communicate that. Different types of light will also affect how you experience and how you see the materials. Some materials will look really bright when there is sun shining straight onto the surface and they will look crystal white. And then when the sun sets, they become kind of a dark or shadowy. So you have to take all those aspects in mind when you're designing from a different material and how it will change during the day and with different lighting on it. So, this is our material library, uh, and it's a pretty big one. It's a very important tool for us. In this part of the material library, we have, uh, for example, terrazzo. It's a material that you make out of crushed stones, uh, and you blend it together with concrete or plastic. A lot of flooring in the subway is made out of uh, terrazzo, so you would recognize it as you walk around in the city landscape. Here we keep all the wooden materials, wooden flooring, a lot of them, solid wood. I love smelling it. This is cedar. It's a very nice smell. It's beautiful. In this room, we collect the different materials that we use. It could be wood, wooden flooring, natural stones, facade materials, roofs, ceiling materials, different type of glass, metalworks, you name it. We have it there in the material room. You can easily go down and browse around and get inspired and choose the materials that you need for your project. For each project, we create something that is called a material board, which is mainly a tray where we put all the materials that we intend to use in each project. And we can show that, for example, to the client at different phases during the creative process and talk about and discuss the materials that we want to use in the project. This is the materials that we use for the exterior of a residential project called SG66. So these are the three different stones or the three different bricks that we used. And you can see that one that is more bright and one that is clearly more dark. And using the size and the pattern and the color of the grout, you can really change the expression to symbolize and communicate that it's different houses, even though on the inside it's the same house. We 
ordered this like big sample so you can see what it will actually look like. So this is a real part of the facade and how it will look like in reality. And we used a very big uh, grout for this project and a light one that contrasts the color of that tile. And on the top of this building there's a penthouse and for that we used a fourth material which is a more glazed tile uh, communicating a little bit more of an expensive and exclusive uh, expression of the tile. So this is an example of how you can use the same material and really make diversity on the outside and the exterior of your building and the facade. I love to be and spend time in the material room. It's a very creative space for me where I get a lot of my ideas. I definitely have a personal connection to materials. I love materials and uh, it's one of my favorite parts of a project when we are able to work with them uh, physically. I also have this tick that I always kind of smell the materials because I think it's um, interesting and important to remember that materials are talking to all our senses. It's not only the visual part. When you move inside a city, different parts of the city will affect you depending on what materials are used in the environment. Some spaces within the city can have stronger smells than others. For example, if you have a lot of water in your city, uh, canals or lakes, we usually have a lot of wooden docks. And we can treat those wooden docks with tar. And I think a lot of people will remember how that smell really is something that you can remember. And a lot of your memories are connected to the smell of tar in a wooden dock nearby water. We think a lot about the different senses when we choose materials. The visual and the aesthetics is primary, but of course we think about the other senses as well. Sound, feel and smell will be a big part of the final and last result in the way that we humans experience each project. Architects should think about all senses when we choose materials and understand how the different aspects of a material will affect you. You may not think about it, but materials are very tactile and always speak to all our senses. It's not only what you see, but also what you can touch, smell and even hear. Think about your favorite city. What are the typical materials used? What lingers in your mind long after you left the city itself? Santorini, all bright, made out of white paint and blue roofs. Or Manhattan and its industrial vibe originating from its brick buildings and dark steel fire escapes. Paris, built out of the ancient rocks it was once standing upon. And not to mention the pink city of Jaipur in India. Do you think about the different materials when working on your project? Or is there any other thing that define the feeling of a city? Let us know in the comments. In the next episode, we are discussing the importance of green cities. Stay tuned.